right, we're now going to look into some real-world rational problems. The very first one that you will find, it is a question that states, at a pie eating contest, no Lynn or whoever character I choose for your semester can steadily eat a pie every two minutes. So we go with our person number one, Nolan. He can eat one pie, that is his work, in two minutes. Brandon is a little slower. At his steady pace, he can eat one every two and a half minutes. So Brandon, he is only eating one pie every two and a half minutes. All right. How long will it take the team of Nolan and Brandon to polish off a table of 12 pies? So we really want to deal with the rate of Nolan plus Brandon to get their rate together, where they together, their work will create 12 pies in X number of minutes. So we're we working with adding fractions. So as you can see, 1 over 2 is not the same as 1 over 2.5. I need to get a common denominator. Well, a common denominator that I can get is 10 because 2 will go into 10 5 times and 2 and a half will go into 10 4 times. So if I multiply this fraction here by 5, I will get 5 tenths. If I multiply this fraction here by 4, I will get 4 tenths. So together, we're eating 9 pies in 10 minutes. Now the question clearly asks when I eat 12 pies in x minutes. So I'm setting my fractions equal to each other. And now I'm going to be cross multiplying. So 10 times 12, we get 120. 9 times x, 9x. Now I get x by itself. All I got to do is divide both sides by 9. So I'm going to go, well, let's see. You can still see it. So x, when I divide this in my calculator, I get that it is approximately 13 and 1 third minutes. So together, the team of Nolan and Brandon can eat 12 pies in 13 and 1 third of a minute. All right, we're now going to look at a more difficult rational real world problem. All right, so the question reads, one ballot counting machine can count 4,000 votes per hour. So my very first machine counts 4,000 votes per one hour. And another tab can tabulate, so can count 7,000 votes per one hour. This first machine, this is where this is a tricky question. He starts at 9 a.m. And the other starts at 1 in the afternoon. So number A, or letter A, his voting machine, he's getting a head start in the counting. And the machines finish at the same time. The nearest minute, when will the two machines finish counting 165,000 votes? All right, so the first thing I need to analyze here is the fact that machine A, he is going solo from 9 until 1 in the afternoon. That is going to be four hours of alone time. In those four hours, if we use his rate of 4,000 votes per one hour, I know that he can count 16,000 votes. So all I need to do is multiply my 4,000 by 4 because it's already in a one-hour increment. So in reality, I'm not dealing with this full rate of counting 165,000 votes. So what I need to do is I need to take 165,000 and subtract the 16,000 that my very first machine already counted. So in reality, I'm really just trying to find out together they're really counting 149,000 votes in I don't know what time, okay? So the next thing I need to do is I need to figure out what their rate is together of A plus B, okay? Well, A plus B, they're already having the same denominator, so together they can count 11,000 votes in one hour. Now it says to the nearest minute, so I'm really going to actually just change this to already being 
into minute increments, and I know that there are 60 minutes in one hour. So I'm going to set these equal to one another because this is what I want to achieve together, and this is their rate together. And I'm going to do some cross multiplying, and I'm going to get some big numbers, and that's okay. So I'm going to have 11,000 times x equals 149,000 times 60. So, since this is going to be a really big number, I'm actually just going to show you that it's times 60. And then dividing by 11,000. So, if you were to type in 149,000 times 60 divided by 11,000 into your calculator, you would get 812 approximately minutes. And this is about approximately 13 and a half hours. So the question asks, when am I done? So the nearest minute, when are these machines actually done? So I actually want a time. Together they started at 1 p.m. So I need to find what time it is after 13 and a half hours from 1 p.m. Well, I know 12 hours from them will be approximately 1 a.m. So 13 hours will be approximately 2 a.m. But it's me half, so that really gets me about 2.30 in the morning. Doesn't that really stink? All right, we're now looking at number eight. And number eight is, is an example of a radical real-world function, or a real, radical real-world question, my apologies. When an object is dropped from the top of a 50-foot tall building, the object will be eight feet above the ground after t seconds where we're given this lovely long formula of t is equal to the square root of 50 minus h. All of this is over 4. Question reads, how far above the ground will the object be after one second? So we need to fill in some information that we know. We don't know our height h, that's what we're trying to find. We know that our t is going to be one second. So I'm going to put t as 1, and I'm going to bring down the rest of my formula here. And now, my goal here is I'm going to solve for my h. So if I'm going to solve for my h, i got to isolate the variable. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to multiply both sides by 4, leaving me with 4 is equal to the square root of 50 minus h. All right, the next thing I need to do is get rid of this radical. And what we learned in this section is to get rid of a radical, I need to take, I need to square both sides. The reason I'm squaring both sides is because this is just a typical square root. It's not a cube root or a fifth root. So when I square both sides, I'm left with 16 equals 50 minus h, the quantity under the radical. So now all I gotta do, well, one thing I could do is I could bring the h onto the other side and the 16 onto the other side. That way I'm not really dealing with this negative over here. So h is equal to 50 minus 16. So h is equal to 34.